this year that I'm doing here at the South Row Council on Aging uh, with the South Row Council. My name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. I work for many, I know many of you, but I work at Myrick O'Connell. I do elder law. There are 67 of us. There's somebody there that does pretty much everything. This is what I focus on. The reason why I'm doing this program and, and to, um, to start is that I realized we were thinking about it uh, as we we're thinking about going into this year, how people call me with or stop by for what they think are really a variety of issues. But really, what it's usually about is this issue, right? They realize that one of the things they're most concerned about is dealing with Alzheimer's disease and with those other kinds of dementia that are related uh, to, or that are, that are caused by other things other than Alzheimer's disease. How to prepare for it, how to deal with it, when it's kind of staring them in the face. So I, I thought that we'd start off this year by just focusing on that. Uh, I asked um, two people to join me today, Susan Cody, who is from Bay Path Elder Services. Bay Path, um, have, we have had people from Bay Path here before. How many of you know what Bay Path Elder Services is? Raise your hand. Oh, a lot, that's great. So for those of you who don't, Bay Path Elder Services, services uh, covers all of the communities in this area. And they are one of the regional, what are called ASAPs, Area Service, uh, Aging, Servi Aging Services Access Point. So they are the entity through which the state um, spends their dollars. Really, they are a nonprofit that contracts with the state to basically manage caring for all of us who are, you know, over 60. How many here are over 60? Yeah, that's a lot, okay. And so, and so I asked her to come because a lot of the programs that we're talking about are programs with money that, that they are administering, right? And Tammy Pazaricki, who does a lot of this work with me, um, Tammy uh, runs actually Pleasantries, which is a, 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 a social daycare um, uh, center in Marlboro, and we're going to talk about that a little bit, the difference between social daycare, social and medical models and stuff as it relates to Alzheimer's as we go through this. So I'm going to, we're, we're going to, I'm going to try not to talk fast um, because there's a lot of material to cover. We're going to really talk about three different pieces to this uh, if we have time. We're going to talk to start off with about the questions that we all get dealing with um, what Alzheimer's is, what, if anything, you can do about uh, avoiding Alzheimer's or reducing the likelihood that you're going to get Alzheimer's, uh, what kind of planning you need to do in order to deal with that if you're not confronted with it. Then we're going to talk about what happens if, oh, you think there might be trouble. You know, you're kind of forgetting stuff, or your spouse is, or your friend is, you know, and you're, and you're trying to figure out whether this could be Alzheimer's, and if, if it is, or something like it, and if it is, what to do. And then, uh, if we have time, we're also going to talk about staying home, planning to stay home even if you're stuck with this or your spouse is stuck with this because there are, everybody's goal, everybody's goal is to stay home. Nobody wants to be going to a hospital or to a nursing home. So the goal is always to see if you can structure things so that no matter what, no matter what your medical condition, whether it's this or something else, you can stay home. So that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, I've asked Tammy and and uh, and Susan to 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 talk to, uh, for you to you a little bit about Alzheimer's, kind of the just to give you a sense of what Alzheimer's is about, and also the distinction between Alzheimer's and other things that cause dementia. Either one of you. Okay. Well, as you can see on the slide, um, that Alzheimer's the statistics are staggering. Um, over 5 million folks have it in America. 
One out of every three seniors will come down with some form of dementia. If you've been looking in the news recently, um, Alzheimer's has actually become the most costly disease in America. It supersedes heart disease and cancer, and the cost, the reason is not the treatment cost, the reason is the cost of the care to get someone with Alzheimer's through their day. So every 68 seconds, someone is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. 15.2 million people, friends, families, caregivers, are caring for a loved one with Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's has cost Americans for dementia care in the United States over $200 billion. 10% of people over the age of 65 have a diagnosis of Alzheimer's. One out of every two folks over the age of 85 have Alzheimer's or other related dementia. Why do we talk about Alzheimer's so much? Because Alzheimer's is actually the number one dementia disease. So dementia we talk of as a set of symptoms. Dementia is a set of symptoms but Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. There are many different dementias out there. You may have heard of vascular dementia, frontal temporal lobe dementia, um, there's Lewy body dementia, Parkinsonian-like dementia, many different types, but Alzheimer's is the most prevalent. Um, what happens with um, Alzheimer's? Well, there are mental cognitive changes, emotional changes that happen with someone. <coughs> and do we want to get into prevention a little bit? Can we talk about it? Yes. So prevention. By the way, this is one of the most common questions. I always thought Alzheimer's was literally roulette, you know, as opposed to some other things that you could really try to deal with. Not so, true. And we'll talk about what sort of signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's <coughs> happen a little bit later. But prevention's the big thing now. How to prevent heart disease, diabetes, stroke, Alzheimer's and dementia. Well, they all sort of relate to each other. What can we do <coughs> to make ourselves protected from Alzheimer's? We can eat a healthy diet, a heart healthy diet. Our heart health and brain health are connected. So, smoking, um, alcohol, not using to alcohol to excess, exercising, all the things our physicians and nutritionists are telling us to be a healthier individual, well, those are the things that we can do to help prevent Alzheimer's disease. The number one thing we want to think about is What's the quality of life we lead, re, lead right now? After you reach retirement age, when we've had a purposeful life every single day, when we get up, we go to work, we keep our mind occupied and busy, maybe volunteering somewhere. We want to become social, connect with people. Isolation and withdrawal happen when we're diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. We can prevent that, help prevent it, by engaging in social activities. So I think, I know it's hard to believe, but you can actually <laughs> avoid Alzheimer's by just being active. You know, so all the reasons that you are like, you know, have for not going out and for like staying at home and not being involved in stuff, well, consider it just healthful for you to be kind of getting out and doing stuff. And by the way, there is, there's a lot more information about those kinds of prevention techniques. Uh, there is a national organization called the Alzheimer's Association, um, and, and we'll get you, and we'll get for the, for the rebroadcast of this on TV, we'll do a flag that has the Alzheimer's Association's phone number and their website, because they talk about a lot of those kinds of prevention tips. And I'll just mention now, although it's relevant later on, the other thing is, they have a 24-hour hotline. It's a 24-hour hotline, so that if there's any kind of issue, if you've got just a random prevention question, or if it's the middle of the night and you're really worried and you can't sleep because you think your spouse has got some issues or somebody's got some issues, just call them. They'll actually be able to refer you to resources that are here or just to help out with those kinds of answers. For people who are, who are worried about, next slide, for people who are worried about this issue, 
uh, and, and need to be trying to deal with asset protection about it. I'm going to talk about that a little bit because this is, this is probably the most common reason why, why people talk to attorneys um, regarding assets because, because Alzheimer's, and it, you, you just heard some of the numbers regarding the costs of it. There was a big New York Times article on it, I think it was two weeks ago, front page, where they talked about the fact that there was a study just recently commissioned and completed suggesting that Alzheimer's right now as it costs more than any other major kind of disease, it costs more than cancer, it costs more than diabetes, and that extrapolating over the next 20 years, it's the disease that is scheduled to be growing the fastest in cost. Why is that? Because it's the one major disease where there's a huge residential component to it, right? There's a huge cost to it, which none of our typical medical insurance coverages cover, and that's the issue. So if you're kind of stuck with Alzheimer's, you're stuck lo looking at some, some really serious costs. So for people to talk to me about that, what, why are they talking about it? Next slide. So um, we've talked about uh, um, uh, a couple of scenarios before where we've talked about folks in, situ in, in particular family situations and what they can do. 